Here we are at Gallery Stokes with Heidi Eichmann uh, for her show, You Can't Win That. Um, Heidi, tell me about the show. So the show, the theme of the show is all about desire. And uh, it started with the fact that I happened to be a master at winning the claw game. And it turned into this sort of massive project where I started winning all these animals and collecting them. And I started cutting off their heads and turning them into these trophies that you see on the wall behind us. Um, and so you are... You won all of these animals. Yes, all of the animals have either been won in some form. If they're not from the claw machine, they're from like carnival games or things that you're really not supposed to be able to win. Um, and, and you mentioned that this the show is about uh, desire. Can you explain that? Yeah, sure. So one of the things I think about the claw machine that's really interesting is uh, talking to people. They're like, "Oh, I'm you know I'm so jealous that you can win that," or "I've never won it." And I think it brings up this idea that. Nobody actually wants any of this stuff. Like, you know, you're not going to actually pay for any of those animals that are in that machine, but it, you want it because someone else has won it, or you want it because you're told that you can't have it. So the show is all about those different aspects of desire and how most of the stuff that we actually desire, you know, it has something to do with need. It has to do with that uh, an, an idea that you want something even if you don't need it or really want it at all. Just the, the fact that it's, it's difficult to get or there's a barrier between you and it makes you want it more. Exactly, exactly. And then, so the painting in the front, when you walk into the space, there's this red wall and there's this Care Bearer, kind of Care Bearer as Buddha. So there's this meditative space in the beginning where you can watch the videos of someone winning it. And you're supposed to sort of think about the fact that, you know, you're just, if you let go of those desires or you let go of, I want that specific thing, you can probably win the claw machine. And then you sort of move out of that space um, through the side of the gallery where there are these mathematical equations that prove that you can win. So I, you know, I'm letting out my secrets. Like you can actually win the machine if you, if you sort of follow this almost like Zen kind of notion of like, I don't want that specific thing in the machine. I just kind of want what's available. And then when you come around the corner into the main space of the gallery, you'll see all the remnants of what happens once those things come out of the machine. And tell me about, I saw the, the equations and all on the wall. Are those real? Is that made up math? What is that? <laughs> they are real, actually. So they have to do with um, the curvature of the claw and the ratio of that to the volume of the animal. And also um, some more extensive math about like space time and within a real or imaginary world. So, wow. so uh, art and math and crappy stuffed animals all go together? Yes, exactly. They do. And, you know, they, even though they are crappy stuffed animals, to me, they're very precious because they're my trophies. And once you win them, they turn into something more than just this thing that you you spent, you know, probably four dollars winning, you know, so. And uh, there's also, we talked earlier about the element of violence and, and tragedy and also sort of comedy in it. How do all those things go together? Well, I think when, you, when you're not aware of how your desires are affecting your choices, I think that's exactly what happens, is that there's a sort of funny aspect of, oh, I got to have that thing out of that machine. But at the same time, the, the reason there's this sort of violent aspect is because it's really tragic when, when you're not paying attention to those desires that can take control of you. And that's where the piece in the show that's called The Ring of Fire, that's why that's there is because it's, you know, you're sort of going down, you know, into that ring of fire when you just sort of follow those desires without really thinking about it. And then there's also this sort of hunting element when you're hunting for something specific. And so the, the hunting references with the um, wallpaper that's behind us that turns into the deer, which happen to be running towards the ring of fire, and they're kind of pulling all of these trophies along with them. And so you come into the space and it's, they're sort of cute, fuzzy animals, but they've been like beheaded and they've been skinned and they've been turned into a rug and they've been you know, made into trophies. So you have to be aware of what those desires do. And also, you know, stuffed animals, childhood, um, hunting, adulthood. Is there some line then uh, here in the show between the, the childhood and adulthood also? Well, you know, it's funny because a lot of people have, have mentioned that they find it really bizarre to come to the show when I happen to be six months pregnant because <laughs> there are these childhood things that I'm destroying. And I think that there is something to that. I think when you're, you know, you see a lot of children, you know, kind of with excitement, you know, winning these sort of games. It's because they're not looking for something specific. And I think a lot of times we lose that along the way and we start 
looking for things and, and, and feeling this desire for things that we just don't need in life. And so one of the things that's really fun about putting the show together is that you can really examine all those different notions of desire and how they affect your decisions. Well, great. It's beautiful. It Thank you. <laughs> I hope it's funny. I think it's, it's hilarious.